Abhijit, welcome to Z Connect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here, and it's a pleasure. So, uh, Abhijit, we are here to talk about a very important topic that I think the world is talking about these days. Is technical at the same time? It's something that is taking over the world and people's minds, and we can't help but talk about it and discuss it. And some people who don't even understand it. Uh, want to know what it's all about and that of course is artificial intelligence but before we get to that abhijit i want to know about you let's tell the audience about yourself what do you do for a living right so uh, my name is abhijit i'm a petroleum engineer who works with ai for sustainability and as weird as it may sound it's uh, something that i've been driven by uh, in the last couple of years which is impact and i believe artificial intelligence is one of the domains where we can uh, make Significant impact in the coming years, mm -hmm. and I think over the course of this talk, people will get an idea on how they can do so. Whether it's somebody uh, with minimal exposure to, let's say, technology, to a CEO, yeah. and uh, I'd love to speak more about it. Great, uh, Abhijit, you were also offline telling me that although artificial intelligence has been there forever, uh, for many many years, it's only in the last couple of years where it's uh, become like this hot topic. you know and we just see it all around us and it's a part of every discussion every event that we go to it's always being discussed by brands by big organizations so tell me was it something like a like something you've been studying for years now or was it like a move that happened for you also a couple of years back a uh, great question so primarily i was a petroleum engineer for a significant part of my life and until i got into let's say research in 2016 that's when there was a transformative shift for me uh, at that particular point of time i was working with energy companies to optimize their processes and i realized that uh, with the right ai tools i can do things that would take months in a couple of hours and yeah. that was the you know first step of the progress and then i realized that there was a lot of processes everywhere especially yeah. in the energy industry right that are inefficient and then i started addressing those um, and we found that we were able to you know uh, look at from a sustainability perspective and an economic perspective yeah. so not only was it good for the environment we were also trying to save money for the company which was a no brainer for majority of the energy companies to come and say hey maybe this is something that we need to consider honestly for me i don't know uh, if there are other um, ways in which i am using ai in my life but very actively there is one way which i am definitely using it and that is chat gpt which is one of the apps which uh, has become increasingly popular over the past few months i feel ever since it was launched and i was very curious and intrigued to know what it holds for me so just tell us how this whole thing works so when it comes to generative ai or anything like chat gpt what they basically do is they do have a set of data that they are trained on and i want you to think of something very simple it's just mathematical equations that will based on the data that you have and based on what it's trained for it will give you the right set of input correct so generative ai you can use from text to text text to image text to videos and there's a lot that you can basically do with it the the other additional fact that i will say is everything that is generated mm -hmm. is not based on something that exists so it's something that is brand new written uniquely for you yes so let's say i'm generating an image of a flower vase yes. with the right set of questions or prompts as we call it it will give you an image that has never been created before and how does it know that it basically there is a set of data that is trained on it knows what it is and then you it is called fine tuning there's a lot of technical terms i don't want to scare you with but what it essentially does is it knows exactly what it is that it needs to generate and then it gives you that So, for example, if you have an Excel, you have columns and rows. We didn't need yes. to tell it what it was. We just had to tell it very specific questions, saying that I know there is some error here and there, and I have a pretty idea, a good idea that it's going to be here. Yeah. And within 15 minutes, it was. It did you didn't have to specify anything about it. You didn't have to key in something for it to look for it. In that, you just had to say it, just like you're telling a person sitting next to you. I think there's an error, and then that system just found it out. Exactly, and that's where I wanted to lead into uh, with these technologies. I don't think you need to be an expert to understand anything anymore. So it's like I have my own expert that I can look into. I can just at least talk to to get a better idea. I wouldn't call it a silver bullet saying that it's going to replace everything that is there. Yes. However, it is going to help me a lot in a lot of cases that let's say domains that I have no idea about or previously. So Abhijit, while we still continue to talk about the pros of this. Um, 
a really amazing invention. Um, tell me about how this can really be used across different maybe industries, different organizations, big brands. Ah, the another excellent question, and this might take a while. So, for me personally, I don't think AI is restricted to any particular domain. Wherever it's, uh, wherever there is a very good case for efficiency, you can basically use it. So whether it's medical, for example, yeah. where you deal with a lot of data, you might be able to automate a lot of routine tasks that would take ages manually to do it. Right. It can be something as simple as just searching a particular patient or a particular diagnosis in, uh, um, in the health record system. Uh, and you can look into, let's say, predictive analysis. A lot, a lot of these AI tools are really good at what they do. And a lot of, uh, let's say, hospitals that we know about are already using this. So it's not something that's relatively new and I believe medicine would be one of the first frontiers where they, you, you would be able to see the actual impact of it. Right. I believe there were also cases that uh, where some models were able to predict the, uh, I believe it was x-rays, if there was abnormalities with a success rate of 95% yes. or more and when compared with a human, they significantly failed. So wow. this, did, this does mean something. So yes. it, I'm not saying that you have to replace it, but at the same time, if it is an expert, you might, it's a good thing for you to just QC with it and just say where this is leading on to. And then for things like, uh, let's say, other than optimization, sustainability is something that's close to me. So I work with water management, emission reduction, mm. and what we realized that there was always rooms for improvement, like with any other company or industry. Any industry, any function. Any function, even if it is. So content generation is another thing that I think we can tie back into. Yes. And I would like to say, so um, I, I'm not a creative person. I am absolutely horrible at it. My <laughs> sister is an artist. So every time I wanted something for my technical publications, I used to go to her and ask her, can you draw this for me? And then sometimes we fight and it takes like a week for us to get back on one particular image. Now, since mid journey and a lot of these uh, generative image generation tools have come out, what I now do is I get an idea of what exactly I want and then I send it to my sister. Okay. That saves at least a week for me in terms of the process. Yeah. She has a better idea of what I, what I have in my mind because as an artist you might have uh, different people, you might have different visualizations of the same object. Yes. Tell me as maybe a, a, a layman who wants to uh, maybe create something and may not be an artist but uh, is it possible to kind of convert a person's feelings, what they are feeling, into an artwork through AI? Right. Um, again, excellent question. This might be a bit tricky to answer in, in very simple terms, but I believe there is an extent to which you can do it. With the right prompting, if I ask an AI model what I want, it will deliver exactly what I want. Right? Okay. So if I'm able to articulate my expressions in a way that is understandable by a model that is trained in a way that it understands, yes. then 100% it should be able to. The other day I was reading a post, uh, I think uh, Amitabh Bachchan has actually mentioned this, that he was actually sitting in a room uh, filled with around 40 cameras around and he was asked to do some kind of expressions and um, uh, do some voices and they said these are all samples that we are collecting. And that's it. There was no scenario, there was no scene that he was shooting. But he said, this is actually going to be used in an AI model. I don't know how, but probably in my absence, it's going to uh, create scenes which I was not, which I have not uh, shot myself, which I have not been part of. I've only given my voice and my expressions to them. And that's it. They are going to create a full Amitabh Bachchan in that scene, even though tomorrow if I'm not alive. It's to that extent that AI is now gone, you know. And it's a little scary at the same time because maybe a person is still alive and it's it can still be used in a in a manner, you know, where the person is not right. needed himself anymore. Because I've been seeing posts on even uh, social media about like AI models of uh, of an Alia Bhatt or a Deepika Padukone. I mean. And they, they, they are really true, like for, I did see a video of maybe Hrithik Roshan or one of these actors and I was like, wow, when did he do this? And then I realized when I saw the caption, how is this AI model of Hrithik Roshan and I said, okay then, you can really create this. Now that, 
Uh, so for me, I think there are multiple aspects to this. So let me break this down. So to the answer, the first part, what is happening in terms of, uh, let's say, the film industry is you do also have the opportunity for digital immortalization now. So if you are a person who wants their legacy to continue on, even after your, you know, uh, your basic entire film life, you can still do that. And that's something that is available right now. And this has been happening in the industry for, I would say, at least in the Hollywood counterpart, they've been doing it pretty well for quite, quite some time. And now there is a lot of ethical concerns which we'll circle back to. But it is also getting tricky in that um, in the aspect of, you know, what is real and what is fake. And yes. what can, what do we have the right to create? Because all this data that's there outside, people are just using it to create whatever they want. And yes. it's a very thin line. And this is where I, I believe we, like general public should also have a say in with the government and with the regulatory body saying that, eventually you need to have the right transparency in place yes. for the right privacy measures, for the right ways that we can basically utilize these tools for the best of let's say, societal benefit and in a way that makes sense for everyone yeah. and in a positive manner. So can I tell you that the banking customer service, if it's an automated response system which also takes in your responses and based on that gives you the options and then finally uh, you know, tries to resolve your problem, it never happens. It doesn't work so far. <laughs> right. So that that's that's poorly implemented AI. And in two years, if you have the same conversation, it doesn't improve. I'll personally take it up. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Abhiji. This has been a very, very insightful discussion. And I, I know we can go on hours talking about it, but it's been so interesting talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. And uh, I'd love to keep <laughs> conversing about this anytime. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank you.